Once again, Magnus opens with this move, a move I've jokingly coined the plow, and his opponent plays pawn e5, the ultimate test of the plow, because this is the top recommended move by Stockfish. And this was gonna be my title for this video, Magnus faces the ultimate test with this dubious opening. But then everything changed when I was analyzing this game, because Magnus is truly changing the way chess is played at the elite level and the way I personally think about chess. And you're gonna see exactly what I mean in this game. Because Magnus now goes c4, we're back into an English opening here, standard position, but with this one chucked in. Now this is titled Tuesday, played 24th of October, and David Paravian, Magnus's opponent, is a serious player. Look at his rating, strong Russian GM, and going into this one, he'd won eight out of the last nine games. So they were vying for first place. So now we see knight f6, e3 from Magnus, you don't use pieces in modern plow theory, right? Now we get d5, the pawn takes, knight recaptures, knight f3, pressures the pawn, knight c6, now knight c3, black still significantly better with this random move chucked in, but the computer wants something like bishop e7, carry on developing, you stay better. But knight captures was played, pawn recaptures, and e4. And suddenly, out of nowhere, look at the evaluation bar reacting, Magnus is better. And it's connected with this move of knight to g5, attacking the e4 pawn, which is suddenly overextended, and this knight jump is made possible by the fact that the pawn is on h4, supporting the square, so the queen can't capture. I mean, this is nuts. These super strong players just going wrong early in the game, outside their theory. Magnus just camped out in their head. So now we see pawn f5, the top engine move, but queen b3. And how drafty are these light squares? You're threatening mate in one. So we see this knight cover the mate, but it's the wrong move. You should go queen f6. You know, computers can tiptoe these complications. But knight e5 covers, and it's a huge blunder. Magnus now over two pawns better, but he misses the best move, actually. He should go queen b5 check. You're hitting king and knight, basic tactics. So the knight has to retreat, but then there's bishop c4 developing, and still you're on that light squared complex. It's awful for black. But Magnus misses that one. He goes pawn f4, trying to remove the defender of this square. So we see captures on Poisson, and now d4, again trying to drive that knight away, undermine it. And fun fact for the day, the word undermine comes from when they literally used to mine under walls to try and get the walls to collapse. You know, picture a siege or something. There's your fun fact. So after this move of d4, what's that knight doing? You can't move or you're getting mated. So we see pawn h6 to counterattack here. And now Magnus goes for the most tricky move. He could retreat, capture this pawn, but he gallops forward. Look at that octopus piece hitting all of these red points, most notably the queen, right? So queen d6 played instead of capturing and everything like that. And now we see knight takes on f8, and this is just astonishing. You know, a guy of this strength just goes absolutely off the rails here and plays knight d3 check. Watch that evaluation bar. Magnus completely and utterly winning, a 3100 turning into like an 1100, giving an entire piece, absolute blunder. And he should have started with takes here first, distract the bishop, then jump the knight in and deliver the check. What is going on with these guys? Why are they crumbling against this rubbish in the opening, right? There's something going on here, I tell you, psychologically and everything. So we see queen g3 check. Now after the king moves, pawn takes on g2. So the rook slides across to save itself, come in front of the pawn and queen f2. So this is Paravian's whole idea. You know, he gets this epic counterattack going in the corner on the rook and everything like that, but he's just completely miscalculated. You can even just give up this rook here with a great game because the attack rage is on and material wise, you've got two minors for the rook. But Magnus plays a better continuation starting with check. Now, if the king takes this knight straight away, you can sidestep with check, 
king goes and then you can check from here and slide this queen all the way back or if the king comes to the corner here whoops uh, king here you can check from here immediately win the pawn but what we see in the game is c6 so taking control of this square now check here the knight captured and again there's this same motif of the queen sliding back even if you can't win the pawn immediately you cover the rook the pawn's about to drop so we get check bishop covers queen e4 the pawn drops and what to say you're threatening to crash through here with mate if you block with the queen like this to keep queens on then there's this nice move bishop a3 cutting down the diagonal distracting the queen and away you go with the attack it rumbles on so we see queen g2, the rook recaptures, bishop e6, and look at this position. Magnus is a bishop up for just the pawn. So we see this one kick on. Now king f7, bishop a3, this bishop centralizes, hits that rook. The second rook comes to the center for black. Bishop d6, rook e4, and after bishop f4, here Paravian resigned, still over a minute on his clock because he's just a piece down for nothing. Magnus is changing chess with these kind of openings. He is in his opponent's head and taking them out of theory. Really interesting. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Curious what you think. Is this the future of modern blitz chess? Thanks very much for watching. See another epic game. Check out the video on screen and I hope to see you again soon.